Good morning. I can see you now. Yeah, I woke up this morning and I thought, my gosh, where am I? And I thought, well, I can take the bus uh, to church. Oh, no, they're on strike. I can take the train. Well, no, they're on strike. Oh, this is in London. So, and I, oh, it's Alamogordo. That's, yeah. Anyway, it is uh, it's a crazy time, but it's nice when you can see it. I'm done with it now. Okay. I'm ready to move on. Uh, announcements. Do we have anything that need to... Guys, have anything? Nothing? Uh, okay. Hey, we're announcement free. So, let me tell you about the patient that walks into the doctor's office. He's very excited. He says, doctor, doctor, I'm shrinking. I'm shrinking. I, I don't know what to do. And he's just uh, in a fury. And the doctor says, calm down now. You have to be a little patient. That was pretty bad, but so you all know weasels, don't you? Okay, you've heard of a weasel. Well, a weasel walks into a drinking establishment, okay? <laughs> and the bartender says, wow, a weasel. I've never served a weasel before. Hey, what will you have? Ready for this? Pop goes the weasel. Yeah, I don't get it. So last but not least, and this is a tie-in. A pig and a hen are walking down the street. And they walk past the church and they see the sign. And it's on the church sign, it says, what can we do to feed the hungry? And they read it and they look at each other and the hen says, I know, we can feed them bacon and eggs. And the pig just looks at the hen and says, that's easy for you to say. For you, it's a contribution. For me, it's a total commitment. <laughs> and that's what we find in our lessons this morning. A different view of what it means to be faithful to the God who loves us. So please will you join me in the confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. For our opening or gathering hymn is hymn 533, the first three verses.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 58. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from, the tra from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Word of God, 
word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll now read responsibly from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's? O oh Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 12. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in feastal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And not, not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, 
whom Satan bound for 18 long years be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? And when he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at the wonderful things that he was doing. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. What does it mean to be faithful? All of our lessons this morning help us to reflect on that question. And they help us to see, perhaps, what it looks like to be faithful. We start in our first lesson from Isaiah. And there are a couple of things to know about this lesson. First of all, um, it has that, that quality of the if and then kind of things. Uh, if you do this, then this, this will happen. And usually that is translated in a quid pro quo kind of thing, um, but not here. There's no conditional stuff here. This is just descriptive. And the second thing and most important thing is that this is a, that the context of this text is whining. Now, not the kind of whine that we, we will share in just a little bit, but the other kind of whining with the H in it, you know. Uh, people are whining. They're whining because God has not found them to be the most faithful people around. He's questioning their faithfulness to him. And so, um, the word from Isaiah is a word that God speaks to Isaiah. And he talks about what it means to be faithful. First of all, he takes on the fasting, which was often accompanied uh, observing the Sabbath. And, and the fasting, we usually think of fasting as giving up of food uh, or things. Um, and God's definition is a little bit broader than that. So he says, if you remove the yoke from you, a yoke? No, it's not the part of the egg. And it's not even a joke if you're Norwegian and you can't pronounce your J's, it's a yoke. No, that's not that thing. If you remove the yoke, that device that enables us to bear a burden, if you remove that yoke from you, what yoke? Well, he goes on to just describe what the yoke is. The yoke is the pointing of the finger. If you quit standing in judgment on people and speak evil of people and... Then on a positive note, he says, and if you give food to those who are hungry, and if you satisfy the needs of those who are hurting, then, then what will happen? Your light will brighten the darkness, and your light will shine for all people in the midst of the gloom all around. That's what a proper fast is. And then he talks about the Sabbath. And he said, now, if you refrain from trampling on the Sabbath, trampling on the Sabbath? Well, he explains that as well. The trampling on the Sabbath is when we pursue our own interests, when we do things our own way or on our own time, and we are the focus. And if you honor God, then, then you will take delight in the Lord your God. In this brief text, God describes what later someone will summarize, and I forgot who it was, that what it means to be faithful is to love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But that comes later. That's not Isaiah saying that here in Isaiah's words but that will come later. But that's what it looks like to be faithful, according to Isaiah. And our second lesson from Hebrews, a little strange, uh, I'll grant you, but um, the writer to the Hebrews talks about being faithful is accepting or receiving the grace of God. And he talks about the time that God's people encountered God on Mount Sinai after they traveled those 40 years in the wilderness. 
they came to Mount Sinai. And there God gave them the Ten Commandments as we know them. And there they were scared to death. God was so holy that even if an animal touched the mountain, it was death. And certainly a human being. And they were shaking and they were trembling. And even Moses was fearful. But the writer to the Hebrews here and throughout his whole letter is trying to show them that Jesus Christ is a better way. That in Jesus Christ, it no longer is there this great fear and shaking. God certainly has the power to shake anything and everything, all of heaven and all of earth. But in Jesus Christ, the writer is saying, God gives us grace and invites us to simply receive that grace. And then, as a result, we can worship God with all in reverence, not fear and trembling, but all in reverence because of the grace that he has given to us in Jesus Christ. That's what it means, or that what it looks like to be faithful. And then in our gospel lesson, here comes Jesus on the Sabbath again. Yeah, he goes into the synagogue on the Sabbath and sees this woman bent over and heals her. Her ailment is removed. And he's taken to task by the leader of the synagogue because in the leader of the synagogue's mind, healing is work. And you don't do that on the Sabbath day. Fact is, Jesus could have waited a few hours till after the Sabbath and would have avoided all the, the turmoil, except that's exactly the point. And Jesus takes the leader to the synagogue and all people who are listening to task and calls them hypocrites. Because <clears throat> they do work on Sunday or on the Sabbath, but they don't define it as work so they can get by with it. Uh, the simple things like watering your, your donkey or your oxen. Well, of course you're going to do it. And it needs to be done. But if you make that not a rule or a, a violation, it make it not work, it's okay. And Jesus is taking the leader and all people to the to task for coming up with these crazy ideas that are all self-centered, serving me rather than observing the awe and reverence of God. Jesus is trying to show them a couple things. Number one, to remind them of even what Isaiah we find in Isaiah what God said the Sabbath was about. It was about honoring God, not about focusing on ourselves and focusing on how we can come out looking good to God. It's not about us, it's about God. And certainly, curing a woman who is bent over for 18 years. And did you notice, not just a woman, but a daughter of Abraham? Yeah. It's an important phrase to, to catch in this text because this is the only time it ever occurs in scripture. But Jesus elevates this woman to real human status, a daughter of Abraham, not just a woman, not just somebody afflicted, but a daughter of Abraham. And certainly it's only fitting for her to be healed on the Sabbath day, God's day, a holy day. Whoa. Jesus also wants them to understand there is something new happening. And throughout Luke's gospel especially, and especially with the parables that are still yet to come, he's trying to help people understand it's about death and resurrection. His own death and resurrection, which eventually they will, they will experience and maybe even eventually understand but he's preparing the way because here this woman who has an ailment for 18 years dies they're right there in the synagogue dies to her old life of 18 years of being crippled over and rises to a new life straight straight up and that theme will continue throughout Jesus ministry of helping people to understand that whole litany 
of death and resurrection, of dying to ourselves and rising to a new life in God. What does it mean to be faithful? And what does it look like? Well, the story is told of a, a mother who takes her young son to a restaurant. Now, they didn't do this very often, and this was a special occasion. So they go to the restaurant, and they order their food. And <clears throat> when the food arrives, the little boy says to his mother in his outside voice, Mom, can I say grace? Oh, yes, sure, you can. So in his outside voice, he says, God is great and God is good, and I thank God for this food. And I thank God even more if, she, if mom ordered ice cream for dessert. <laughs> With liberty and justice for all, amen. Okay. So <clears throat> some around in the restaurant heard this because it was his outside voice, and they chuckled. Some laughed, you know, smiled, and except right across the aisle was a lady who heard this. And she, in her outside voice, said, huh, that's what's wrong with kids today. They don't know how to pray. Why asking God for ice cream? I never. And the little boy is devastated. Mom, did I do something wrong? Is God mad at me? And mom tries to assure that she's just fine, and God is, is fine with his prayer. And just then, a, an elderly gentleman got up and came over to the boy and said, young man, I happen to know that God thought your prayer was just fine. And then he leans down and whispers, not in his outside voice. And he says, it's too bad she doesn't ask God for ice cream because ice cream is good for the soul sometimes. Uh, so, of course, they finish their, their meal and mom orders ice cream for, for dessert. And the waitress brings the, the ice cream and he looks at the sundae and without saying a word, he picks up the sundae and walks over to the lady, puts it in front of her and with his big smile on his face and said, ice cream is good for the soul sometimes and my soul's already good. And gives her the ice cream. What does it mean to be faithful? A little ice cream? a little bread, a little wine, a little grace given to us in Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. Amen. Oh, yeah. We'll sing the first three verses of hymn 858.
Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts and service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and equality. Merciful God, receive receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Generations, bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our calling and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Zana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Come for all is ready.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through, through this, this meal, meal you, you have, have bandaged, bandaged our, our wounds and fed, and fed us, us with, with your, your mercy. mercy. Now, now send, send us forth to live for others, others both friend and stranger, and stranger that all may come to know your love. love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. We'll sing the first two verses, three verses of hymn 526. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.